Yeah, this is a uh, now in the office of the de Havilland prototype. Uh, I'll quickly go through the layout. Um, it's pretty much a standard World War II RAF type layout. Over here we've got the throttle quadrant with the two throttle levers and the propeller, propeller pitch controls. Uh, the yoke stick, because it was a photocross and bomber, they had the yoke type control with the brake paddle there. There's very little difference between this and the B35 and the FB6. I'll uh, go through those as we go. Across this side is the standard engine panel. We have RPM meters, uh, boost gauges, this is the pressure of the superchargers, uh, oil temperature and rad temperature there, oil pressure and, oh, one's missing, sorry, uh, rad pressures as well there. So that was your engine control panel. At the top is the flap indicator, flaps up and down there. In the centre is the standard RAF blind flying panel. All RAF aircraft are fitted with this. Was, most of the instruments on here are not electrically powered and they use just pitot-static systems. So if the electric goes, you can still fly it using that panel. You've got an uh, airspeed indicator, and miles per hour on this one. This is the turn and slip, attitude, automatic horizon unit, climb and descent indicator, altitude, this is a compass repeater from the RI compass at the back of the aircraft. And here is your turn and slip indicator here, showing the type of turn you're doing, the angle of turn and also slip, which is sliding down sideways. But you need to put rudder on to keep that slip to a minimum. This is junction box A. Junction box A primarily is the master switch for power. And, hang on, I got that wrong. No, sorry, they moved it. <laughs> sorry, you get master switch power and some of the switches for things like um, lights, rockets. These two buttons are the propeller feathering buttons. If you lose an engine, you feather the propeller, the blade goes straight on into the wind and stops the engine windmilling, which puts huge drag onto an aircraft. This is blind approach. It's a very early form of instrument landing system. The radio receiver behind you would pick up two signals from a runway, overlapping signals, and depending on the strength of the two signals, these two crosshair indicators would either go to the left or the right, and you flew to keep these two crosshairs on the centre line. If you're on the centre line, you come straight down the centre line of the runway. Over here, underneath, you've got undercarriage indicators. I don't know why we've got another flap indicator there. Look at that. Uh, these are the starter buttons. You have a booster coil and a starter. So, to start an engine, you press the booster coil, which doubles the voltage to the magnetos. It gives you a really big fat spark. And then the starter is the DC starter motor, and that starts the engine going. And hopefully, they ignite. Uh, oxygen regulator down here. These are the magneto switches for the engines. Just the, each cylinder on the engine had two spark plugs and there were two magnetos, one on one side of the engine, one on the other. The idea being if one magneto got damaged or failed, the engine would keep running because the other magneto would keep the spark plug, second spark plug running. Brake pressure indicator. You get an overall pressure of about 300 psi for the brakes and then two individual ones one for the left wheel, one for the right wheel. And as you move the rudder pedals fore and aft, so the pressure to each wheel, it's called differential braking, would change, and that's how you steer the aircraft on the ground. Okay. Aileron trim here, rudder trim up above us at the top here. Okay, down there. Okay. Now going round, finally, this is probably the one that's slightly different to the standard production units, the B box. And we have Detonator switches, which aren't used on the prototype, and fire extinguishers for the two engines, one for each engine. Fuel gauges, the cockpit clock, so when you're doing your trials and you're logging everything you're doing, it's all done by this clock here. And again, the navigators, oxygen regulator below that. On production aircraft, there'll be a whole bank of switches across the top of here for things like the nav lights, downward ident lights, and such things as that. Um, as I said earlier, I'm one of the things, the, Prototype had no lighting, external lighting on it at all. 
Uh, I think part of that was to speed up the design and production and get it flying, and also the fact that it was not intended to fly at night.